Hello everyone, my name is Saeed Hashemi. Today I'm going to give you a short presentation about introduction to Wilbur stability analysis. Here is the outline of my today's presentation. Uh, first, I will introduce the Wilbur stability concept and explain the importance of Wilbur stability analysis. Then I'll talk about uh, in-situ stresses and uh, different far-field stress regimes will be introduced. Uh, then the method of calculating the stresses uh, induced around a drilled borehole will be explained. And finally, uh, I'll show you an example how to drive the stresses around a borehole by linear elastic method. We know that drilling in geomaterials such as rock and soil is conducted for different purposes and different sizes ranging from a small borehole to large excavations such as tunnels and shafts. A feature which is common in all these openings is releasing of pre-existing stresses and in this situation at least we have elastic deformation. So if we can design a stable well bore, we can save uh, in money and time, which are very important aspects for drilling companies. And if the borehole collapses, for example, during the drilling, uh, the drilling rod can get a stock into the borehole and the drilling process will be terminated. Uh, these two photos uh, are examples uh, of uh, well boring stability after the drilling process. Here are some of the terms related to borehole instability. First one is yield. Uh, when yield happens, rock loses some of uh, its uh, load carrying capacity and uh, hoop stress or tangential stress around the borehole uh, will reduce and uh, it's evidence of rock trying to find a stable equilibrium. And the next one is breakout. In case of breakout, uh, the stress difference in the plane normal to the borehole axis, which is sigma h min and sigma h max, uh, the difference between these two stresses are high and indicates that the uh, material around the borehole uh, has surpassed is, uh, its strength. And But it's not the sign of a full collapse because collapse is a complex structural response which is affected by many factors such as stresses, strength of the material, fabric of the geomaterial uh, and drilling uh, method etc. Okay, uh, stresses around a borehole. Uh, in fact, uh, far field stresses are natural earth uh, stresses and pressures generated by gravity and tectonics. Thus, uh, borehole stresses are produced by creation of an opening in a natural stress field. Here, you can see the um, principal horizontal stresses, sigma h max and sigma h mean. If we can uh, convert these stresses to uh, cylindrical coordinates, we will have sigma theta and sigma r, which are the principal stresses around a drill uh, borehole. Sigma theta uh, is the tangential stress, also called the hoop stress, and is always tangential uh, to the wall trace. And sigma r here yeah, is the radial stress, which is generated by the inter borehole uh, pressure, such as mud cake or any supporting system uh, inside the borehole, and is always perpendicular uh, to the borehole wall. And it should be said that um, sigma theta is the critical aspect of a stress condition. So uh, high values of sigma theta lead to uh, rock failure and lower sigma uh, theta values imply the well bore uh, stability. Uh, in case of uh, one dimensional in situ stress uh, condition, uh, which you can see here, uh, drilling a borehole causes uh, stress concentration uh, around it. As you can see here, the magnitude of a stress is much higher than here, which is far from the borehole. And But for uh, two or three dimensional stress conditions, 
the stress field around the borehole uh, is more complicated and need uh, f further considerations. But the point is the stresses around the borehole will be higher than the previous condition that we have th that we had here. So we should keep in mind that the creation any hole in the ground will cause a stress con concentration around it. Uh, in case of drill a borehole to the ground, uh, a stress arc uh, is generated to redistribute uh, in situ stresses. As you can see here, if we assume the elastic behavior for underground rock, everyone carries equal load, but when we drill the borehole, uh, these two guys, which are near to the borehole wall, um, ye, uh, carry uh, more load and they may yield if they are overstressed. So this stress arc uh, causes the stress redistribution and around the borehole we have a stress uh, concentration as I mentioned before. Uh, if we draw the principal stresses around a borehole which are sigma r and sigma theta as I mentioned before and in case of no pressure inside the borehole such as mud pressure or any supporting pressure uh, inside the borehole, sigma r is about to zero and sigma theta is maximum at the borehole wall and when we get far from the borehole sigma r increases and sigma theta decreases and this difference between the stresses uh, in far from the borehole uh, is related to the differences between the in situ principal stresses sigma h max and sigma h mean. Uh, we have three different far field stress regimes uh, normal faulting, reverse faulting, and strike slip faulting. In normal, uh, normal faulting, you can see that uh, sigma 1 or maximum principal stress is the vertical stress, sigma 2 is maximum horizontal stress, and sigma 3 is the minimum horizontal stress. But in reverse faulting, sigma 1 will be the maximum horizontal stress or sigma h max and sigma 2 is sigma h mean and sigma 3 is the vertical stress. And finally in a strike slip faulting, sigma 1 will be the maximum horizontal stress and sigma 2 will be the vertical stress and sigma 3 will be the minimum horizontal stress. So by measuring or estimating the uh, principal stresses or in situ stresses, uh, then we can uh, sub these values into our carriage equations, and then we can find the principal stresses around the uh, uh, drilled borehole. Uh, there are different methods to calculate the principal stresses around a drilled borehole, sigma theta and sigma r. Uh, but the simplest one is the Kirsch equation, which assumes the linear elastic behavior for underground geomaterial. Uh, you can see that sigma h max is the maximum horizontal stress, sigma h mean is the minimum horizontal stress, and sigma v is the vertical in situ stress. Uh, P is underground pore pressure, Ri is the well bore radius. R is the distance from the borehole and theta is the angle from horizontal orientation. Uh, so by these equations, we can calculate uh, principal stresses uh, around the uh, uh, drilled borehole. If we plot the tangential stress versus the angle from the direction of uh, maximum horizontal stress, theta, as you can see this is theta and this is the value of tangential stress, uh, we can see that in the direction of uh, maximum horizontal stress, uh, sigma theta is minimum and with increasing the angle and in the direction of 90 degrees from the horizon maximum horizontal stress, which is here, the value of tangential stress is maximum. So uh, any problem related to the borehole stability like uh, borehole breakout will happen in these two locations in the direction of uh, minimum horizontal stress. Okay, here is an example that I have provided from Reservoir Geomechanics book from Mark Zoback. In this example, we're going to calculate the sigma theta 
in the direction of uh, maximum horizontal stress and minimum horizontal stress in any distances from the borehole wall. So if we assume that uh, sigma h max, which is the far field stress, is 90 megapascals and sigma h min, which is the minimum horizontal stress, is equal to 51.5 uh, megapascals and also vertical stress which is into the page uh, and equal to 88.2 megapascals um, also the pore pressure around the borehole uh, is equal to the mud pressure which is applied inside the borehole both of them are equal to 31.5 megapascals so we are going to calculate the sigma theta in uh, any distances from the borehole wall in these two orientations. So by using the Kirsch equations, we can calculate uh, the tangential stress and radial stress in any direction and any distance from the borehole wall. For example, in here, we calculate uh, sigma theta, tangential stress in the direction of uh, maximum horizontal stress and minimum horizontal uh, stress. You can see that uh, we have the minimum tangential stress at the borehole wall and with increasing the distance from the borehole, the sigma theta increases. And in the direction of minimum horizontal stress, as I mentioned before, we have the stress concentration in here and maximum tangential stress in this point and this point. You can see that with increasing the distance from the borehole wall, the magnitude of sigma theta decreases. So by using uh, Kirsch equation, we can calculate the sigma theta and, and also sigma r radial stress in any angle from the horizontal direction and any distance from the borehole wall. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and thank you so much for your attention.